Howdy do, this is Ghoulie Joe's husband, Top Hat Tolab. He's standing in for me because I had a lipectomy on Tuesday. That means the removal of a fatty tumor. And so I look like someone punched me in the eye. So he's standing in for me. This is my review of Hardware. It's a film from 1990 that takes place in 2000. It concerns a space marine named Mo, played by Dylan McDermott who buys a cyborg head for his girlfriend Jill, who's played by Stacey Travis from Phantasm 2 and Intolerable Cruelty. Intolerable Cruelty. I love me some Coen brothers. I do have interests outside horror movies. So he buys it for her to make art out of. Unfortunately, the thing isn't dead and begins to reassemble itself, killing anyone who stands in its way. I first heard about hardware from a book I read on obscure horror movies, and indeed, it was hard to find. But I work at the public library and we have a system for ordering stuff from all over California and I got it that way. Thank God for Link Plus. <laughs> He's doing the eye roll, that's adorable. The color palette of the movie is interesting. It's always dim, but it moves from dark blue to deep red without much in between, maybe some brown. The tone is very dark. It's highly reminiscent of dystopian sci-fi movies from the late 70s to the early 90s like Mad Max and Total Recall. It's fairly violent for the time period, and supposedly it shocked the MPAA, which first gave it an X rating before it was demoted to an R. The soundtrack is pure metal, with guest appearances by Iggy Pop and Let Me Kill Mr. playing roles in the movie. Jill is the best character. She's brave and smart and totally outdoes Moe's friend Shades, who's played by John Lynch from Isolation. If you haven't seen Isolation, do yourself a favor and watch it. Shades is goddamn useless. Mo isn't much better. In one scene, Jill dangles helplessly from a building while Mo watches helplessly, and then she saves herself by swinging in through a window. Even though she's injured and people are telling her to lie down, she jumps up to save Mo from the cyborg. Really, she should have been the main character instead of Mo. Alas, she also outdoes a pair of black security guards who, of course, die, saving the white people no less. There's a per pervasive motif of Americana throughout. Jill, while dressing it up as art, paints the cyborg head with an American flag. When it comes to when it comes to life, she beats it up with a baseball bat. The cyborg emits a toxin that causes euphoria and reportedly smells like apple pie. The only thing that's missing is hot dogs. Then there's an image system of artificiality from Moe's mechanical hand to Jill's art piece with a cyborg head and melted baby dolls. They briefly discuss not wanting to have kids because the world has totally gone to shit with radiation, so in a weird way, Jill makes the sculpture that Mo has contributed to, and it's almost like that's their kid. If this all sounds wonky, I totally blame the lipectomy. So that's my say. I enjoyed it. I recommend it, especially if you're big on 80s nostalgia, because it also features Mark Northover, who played Burglecut in Willow, and William Hootkins. He was Eckhart in Tim Burton's Batman. Or if you're big on giggling at the way people of long ago imagined the future would be. Here they anticipated FaceTime but with landlines. Thank you for your kind attention. Night night.